A very warm welcome to the University of Reading for the first of what will be three workshops organised by the Royal Residence Network. Now given that this is the first workshop and for the benefit of those that aren't familiar or haven't been involved with the shaping of this network, I thought it'd be useful just to set, set out the background um, to the project, um, talk a little bit about its aims and just remind you what the next two days have in store for us. The network's been inspired by a remarkable convergence of new research on sites of royal residence in early medieval Britain. After a quiet couple of decades in this topic, there are now a suite of projects that are examining this theme, archaeological projects, in different parts of Britain. Now, as the director of one of these, the site of Limming in Kent, that I'll be talking about very soon, I felt there was an exciting opportunity to bring these separate initiatives together to share ideas and to develop common approaches. I initially contacted Gordon Noble with the idea after he delivered a really excellent paper on his site at Rhiney, um, here at Reading. Um, I suggested the idea to him. He seemed enthusiastic. <laughs> so then I approached the directors of the other projects. Um, so that includes Sarah Semple, David Petz involved at Yevering, Chris Skull, um, Jude Pluvier, Faye Minter involved with the Rendlesham project, and also um, Helena Hamero um, Ad and Adam McBride doing work um, at Long Whittenham and Sutton Courtney. We then together collaboratively shaped an application, submitted it to the AHRC's um, networking scheme um, and that was successful and the network was born. It was clear from the outset in thinking about the British sites that it was really important that we open the conversation and dialogue up to other disciplines and to scholars working on related themes um, in other regions of Europe. Um, we needed to look beyond the, the British bubble, if you like, to gain any clear sense and understanding of the phenomenon under examination. Um, and it's great to see many of you here today who are going to provide that wider comparative focus. The network's going to organise three workshops over the course of 2016, starting here, moving on to Durham, and then ending um, at Aberdeen uh, in November. Each of the, the meetings will examine a theme of cross-cutting significance. We're going to start um, today and tomorrow examining the, the theme of temporality, how sites change over time. At Durham, we're going to look at the internal structure and fabric of sites and, and, and with a particular emphasis on their ritual lives. And then in Aberdeen, we're going to explore um, the external relationships that sites like this had within wider networks of power. Um, there could have been other ways, I'm sure, of structuring the network, but those themes suggested themselves as being useful for directing discussion. We're going to be recording, it's going to be experimentally recording um, the workshop, so I, I really have to apologise for this. You'll have a camera pointed at you if you're delivering a paper. We also hope to record some of the discussion as well. The purpose being that we want to upload those videos onto our website, the network website, which will disseminate the results of the meetings to wider audiences. And another aspect of that is that we're going to have a blog that Matt Austin um, is going to uh, be administering. So we're going to post um, um, some of the results and updates on, on the blog as well. In terms of um, securing a, a longer term legacy for the network, um, our intention is to publish um, either an edited volume or a journal special edition based on our discussions and hopefully um, submit that manuscript before the end of 2017. Hopefully. 
Who is the network? What does it comprise? In addition to the directors of the five collaborating projects um, at the core, um, we also have John Blair. Um, Jane Carroll, unfortunately, she couldn't be with us today um, due to illness. She's a place name specialist at the University of Nottingham. And also we have Paul Stamper. Where is he? Paul, who is still just about employed with Historic England. So we have the, the members of the collaborating projects. I've mentioned um, the, the um, members on the steering committee, so that's John Blair, um, Paul Stamper, um, Jane Carroll. Um, we also have some early career researchers on the network as well. Um, so that includes Matt Austin, a PhD student here, Adam McBride, PhD student at the University of Oxford, and Faye Minter, um, who's representing the Rendlesham Project um, at Suffolk County Council. Last but not least, there are two members of staff that um, provide essential support for the network. You all would have met and corresponded with Zoe Knapp. Um, and another key person is Simon Maslin, who's the network website administrator, and both are doing PhD topics related to the Limage project. There's no requirement for me now to go into the detailed thematic content of the next two days, because that was set out in the synopsis that was pre-circulated. So we're all going to be addressing that in one way or another, either in our presentations um, or in a wider discussion. The basic question is, um, how can we exploit the deep time perspectives provided by archaeology and related um, landscape-based approaches to interpret the temporality of sites of early medieval royal residents? And then how can we move from that to develop more sophisticated understandings of the dynamics of early medieval power, how early medieval power structures change, develop, um, and uh, evolve. A quick recap on how we're going to structure the next two days. Um, this morning, I thought what would be really useful to do is to have short summaries of each of the five collaborating projects just to, for, particularly for those that aren't familiar with the, with the new UK research, um, what's happening and why we think this is a good time to start bringing um, these individual initiatives together. This afternoon and tomorrow morning, that's going to, be, we're going to be hearing a selection of papers examining the theme from different perspectives. And what's great to see is that we've got an excellent combination of broader synthetic studies with more highly focused um, presentations examining particular sites, regions and landscapes. So that's exactly the kind of balance um, that, that we were looking for. Finally, this will be culminating um, tomorrow afternoon in a round table discussion, um, provisionally entitled Stability, Transformation and Transience, explaining change in the life of sites of early medieval royal residents. It's an oppor opportunity to draw out some of the key strands from the discussion and to develop new questions and hopefully some kind of a research agenda that can be followed in the future.